What's going on guys? This is Rocky Avelli. This is a video I'm extremely excited to show you because this video is about a year in the making. I have been working on this set for the past year and I've finally completed it. This is a complete set in this binder of 1975 tops. I've gradually been acquiring the cards. I bought a, uh, I think a 500 card lot of uh, commons and minor stars uh, around this time last year just to get started. And I then, you know, incrementally I, I got like the 30 card lots off of eBay where you pick the, pick the cards you want. Uh, you know, I, I did that every once in a while until I got relatively close to completing it and then COMC to get all the straggler cards and then at long last the graded rookie cards that I really wanted slabbed. Uh, so this is it. I, I, three or four weeks ago I bought the Brett. That was my last card in this set. And it is complete. I've wanted to complete this since I was like 12 years old. I love the look of this set. I always have. I've always given googly eyes to it. <laughs> uh, it is finally done and I'm proud to be able to show it to you right here. But before I do that, I want to give a huge shout out to Mike at Baseball Collector. Because... I, and also, I want to apologize to the guy because I've been sleeping on you, dude. Uh, I just now realized over the past 24 hours that you featured me prominently in your video. Um, oh, I, I forget what it's called off the top of my head, but it was within the past week. You have uh, you gave me a prominent uh, over my. Um, over my PSA reveal, over my 15 card submission at PSA where I pulled the the uh, Clemens Gem Mint 10, you gave me a prominent uh, prominent uh, advertisement to go and check out my video, and that's why I had a huge spike. I know it, and thank you, Mike at Baseball Collector. I just want to I just want to shout you out right there. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, fellow Texan, fellow Texas Rangers fan, dude, you're awesome. All right, let's get into the cards. Okay, to start out the set, we have the uh, 74 highlight cards. A lot of Hall of Famers in this uh, little run of cards here. We have Hank Aaron, uh, Lou Brock, Bob Gibson, Al Kaline, Nolan. All right. <laughs> Here's David Clyde. Uh, for those that don't know, he was the uh, first overall draft pick out of uh, out of a high school out of Houston in 1973 by the Rangers. And uh, <laughs> leave it to the Texas Rangers to send a high school kid directly to the major leagues out of the draft. <laughs> it's just amazing how no one in the organization you know, said, hey, uh, maybe it would be a pretty, a pretty stupid idea to send a high school kid who has no idea how to uh, get majors, major league hitters out at this point. Uh, you know, he doesn't know how to, you know, you know, throw off speed, breaking pitches, you know, things of that nature. Kind of important. <laughs> and have him come up to the major leagues immediately and just get rung up. Just absolutely tattooed, lose his confidence, throw his arm out. Yeah, um, Red Sox and Cubs fans, y'all had the curses for a while. That's our mini curse. This is why we haven't had a serviceable, uh, we've only had three serviceable starting pitchers. 
come out of the Rangers minor league system in the last 40 years. Kevin Brown, Kenny Rogers, and Derek Holland. That is it. I defy you to name me another one. Anyway, enough of that rant. Let's continue. There's Dave Concepcion. He was a key player for the uh, Big Red Machine back in the uh, mid mid seventies. Oh, this is a good page right here. Uh, we have uh, Thurman Munson and Raleigh Fingers back to back. Look at the twirled mustache on Raleigh Fingers. There is in full effect. He had it throughout his entire career and he still has it. It is in full effect on this card. What a great looking card that is. That Thurman Munson. I mean that Raleigh Fingers, sorry. And here's the uh, Thurman Munson. Very underrated player. Um, Johnny Bench overshadowed him as a catcher for a long time, which is weird because he was a Yankee. But, I mean, the guy hit, you know, between 280 and 310 ish uh, throughout his entire career. Every single year, 20 home runs. Very, very solid player. You know, gold glove caliber catcher as well. Very underrated player. There's Dave McNally, good pitcher for the Orioles back in the day. There's uh, Dave Parker and Burt Blylevin, a couple of Hall of Famers right there. <laughs> good picture of Burt Blylevin, though, too. There's Dusty Baker. Ron Santo, another Hall of Famer. Buddy Bell, former Ranger. Joe Rudy, a very underrated player, a very unsung player of the A's, uh, you know, out of the A's dynasty teams from the early 70s. He was very, very solid back in his prime. There's a Tommy John of surgery fame there. There is the human vacuum cleaner, Brooks Robinson. Um, I'm not sure. I think this, this is either his last year card or his second to last, last year card. I'm not sure off the top of my head. But man, was this guy absolute beast at the hot corner. Unbelievable. I mean, Nolan Arenado is an excellent defensive third baseman. But, I mean, it's this guy, in, you know, engraved in granite on the mountaintop as the best defensive third baseman of all time. And then, and then you can make a case for, you know, Arenado, Adrian Beltre, and all those guys kind of clamoring for the second tier. <laughs> I like this card like you know all these old cards um, sometimes they had printing issues and the coloring was a little bit off a little bit too much on the red on that particular card that's why he looks like he uh, just ate the blueberry candy in the Wonka factory so <laughs> there's a Bobby Bonds card right there Ferguson Jenkins Hall of Famer. And there's a uh, Dave Winfield second year card right there. Pretty good looking card. You know, there's a there's a little corner. Let me kind of move the binder here. Let's zoom in. I don't know if y'all can see that. Yeah, so it's a little bit creased in the corner here. Focus. Focus. There we go. Yeah, it's a little bit creased in the corner here, but still. Looks great in a binder. Um, very happy with it. You know, second year Dave Winfield, you can't sneeze at. 
And there's a Steve Swisher, father of Nick. <laughs> I love Nick Swisher. He's awesome. Word has it, and the story is that when he was at when he was still at Ohio State, and all the uh, major league scouts were still, you know, were, were you know clamoring around him, around him, he was going to be a first round pick, and the, the Indian scouts were. Uh, <laughs> The Indian scouts were around him. They were talking to him. And the first thing that Nick Swisher said when the Indian scouts were around was, this is when Steve Finley was was playing for the Indians. He's like, hey, so what's up with, the, with, uh, with Finley's old lady? I love that. It's like, it's, it should be the most pressure-packed situation, but he was so chill. That dude raised that boy right. I'm telling you, man. There is Schmidt. That's a uh, third year Mike Schmidt right there. And it's in pretty good condition too. Like that card a lot. There's Belling Mark Bellinger. He was one of the all time best defensive shortstops. He was the all glove, no bat kind of shortstop that you got a lot back in the 70s and 80s. And there's a Fisk. I love the uh, 75 Red Sox and Ray and uh, Reds from this uh, from this year, because just the historical aspect is that World Series was so epic that you know you look at Fisk and you know he hit the home run that won that game six, the game winning home run that won that game six. That's pretty pretty cool. All right. George Foster, he hit uh, 50 home runs, I think, oh, sometime in the late 70s. And that stood as the last time a player hit 50 home runs until Cecil Fielder came along in 1990. So that, that, was, a, that was pretty much his claim to fame. Uh, a long gap between guys that hit 50 home runs, which is pretty cool. Hope y'all are enjoying my uh, awesome camera work here. <laughs> All right, here's a... Here's the player I give the award to as the player that looks least like a professional athlete who was a professional athlete. Shout out to Rich Folkers. Dude, you killed it. You're the man. Rich Folkers, awesome, dude. And there's Pops, Willie Stargell. I mean, this card has a bit of a crease in the top corner here. But otherwise, it's not too bad. It looks still looks good in the binder, so I'm cool with it. If I can find a better condition card, you know, ar around the way at a card show or something for really cheap, I'll pick it up. But I'm pretty happy with that. There's the Mad Hungarian, Al Hrabowski. Al Hrabowski. Awesome. One of the best nicknames ever. There's Bill the Spaceman Lee. Rick Monday. Phil Necro. There's Garvey, Steve Garvey.
There's the uh, Bob Gibson card. Um, this is very, very late in his career. I'm not sure if this is his last year card or not. Um, not in the best shape, I admit. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's still love Bob Gibson. Who doesn't love Bob Gibson? He was an awesome, awesome pitcher back in the day. There's Dave Kingman. He was kind of the uh, the Joey Gallo of his day. Just, you know, swing for the fences every time. You know, screw the strikeouts. You know, swing for the fences. You know, <laughs> hit a lot of bombs. That kind of guy. You know, his you know career average is around like the 220 area. So... It's like, I don't know what it is about this card. It's like just the the picture in this card just amuses me. That expression on his face. There's Cookie Rojas with the giant glasses. As is uh, as this par for the course from a set from this era. Bert Campanaris. Bake McBride, a nominee for the all-name team from 1975. And there's the Joe Morgan. Great player. Uh, in my opinion, a very, very annoying announcer. There's Mel Stottlemyre. There's Hall of Famer Steve Carlton. Uh, now we're getting into the uh, MVP cards from uh, 1951 to 1974. I love these because they show who won the MVP in each year. And the uh, it, it shows the design, the, like the progression of the design of the cards from each year. So uh, Roy Campanella there. Yogi Berra and Willie Mays. Awesome. Uh, Yogi Berra, Roy Campanella, Mickey Mantle, Don Newcomb. And this is a great one. Mickey Mantle and Hank Aaron. Awesome. There's a couple of Ernie Banks cards here. Maris and Dick Grote. This is really cool to see the progression of the, of the design of these cards. You know, Maris and Frank Robinson. That is straight up fire right there. There's Mantle, Sandy Koufax. Brooks Robinson, and uh, if you ever have a, uh, if you're ever in a sports bar and you have a trivia question pop up of who was the 1965 AL MVP, well, it's Zoilo Versailles. So there you go. I've I've done my good deed for the day. And whenever you think of me, think of me kindly. Thank you. Gaz and Cepeda, Gibson, Denny McLean, who won 30 games and is kind of petered out after this year. Awesome. Love these cards. One of the few multiplayer cards that I actually love. And there he is, Oscar Gamble, the greatest Afro 
of any of any athlete I've ever seen. The hat does not do him justice. That thing is fantastic. You saw in my intro, that last picture in my intro, with his with his helmet flown off. That thing is absolutely spectacular. Now, uh, Bob Lewis uh, uploaded a video recently with uh, with a rookie card of Drew Pearson from the 1975 Topps football set, and Drew Pearson has a case. He, I mean, he's in the ballpark of being the best Afro. That thing is awesome, no doubt about it. But I mean, Oscar Gamble is the goat, no doubt about it. <sighs> Drew Pearson is in the ballpark, though. All right, here's Bobby Valentine, longtime manager of the Rangers back in the 80s and 90s. Um, you know, he actually owned a sports bar in Arlington for a long time. Well, while I was growing up, whenever my family went to Arlington to go to a Rangers game, we'd always stop in at that sports bar and get a burger. Uh, I'm pretty positive that thing does not exist anymore. But it is what it is. Pretty good burgers from what I remember. There's Lou Pinella. Don Sutton, Hall of Famer. Ah, now we're getting to our first graded card. The Placeholder. A seven, Robin Yount in a seven, and I think it's a really good seven. Kind of bring it up really close for you here. There we go. I mean the, I mean just a little touching on the corners there. Centering's not the best on it. You know the corners are just a little bit soft, just a little bit. And the edges, and you see the little chipping on the bottom there. But I'm all about the four foot test. Hold the card about four feet away from your face and take a look at it. Does it look good to you? Yes or no? And that's how you determine. And this card passes. I mean, a seven is a really good grade on this card. I like it a lot. I got it for pretty. You know, actually relatively cheap. So, I'm pretty pleased with this. Well, Alright, there's the Robin Yount rookie card from 1975 Tops. There's Bobby Gritch with an outstanding mustache. Ah, and the George Brett. This was the car that completed the set, and it's an eight. And honestly, I got to tell you, this is one of the better eights I've ever seen. There's the top two corners there. I mean, can you find a fault? I mean, if you had to nitpick, maybe that bottom left just a little bit soft. Just a very, very tiny, tiny bit. Back's not too bad, too. One of the best looking eights I've ever seen. So when I saw this come up on the market on eBay, I jumped on it. You know. This being an 8 and not a 9, which I think it should be a 9 personally, but um, this being an 8 and not a 9 saved me a few hundred bucks, so I'm pretty thankful for that. <laughs> this is for my personal collection anyway, you know, for the, for the, uh, in, in the interest of completing this set. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. All right. There's a catfish hunter, the other Mike Tyson. 
And there's a uh, there's Tom Grieve. He's a uh, he's Mr. Ranger. He's a uh, he's still a he's still doing color commentary for uh, Rangers games on television. And he's been doing that since I was a little kid. He's been doing it for over thirty years now. There's Gary Maddox rocking the afro and awesome facial hair. So, awesome Gary Maddox. There's Jim Cott. Bill Buckner straight up owning the unibrow. Owning it. Dude, you do you, Bill Buckner. You do you. Own that unibrow. This is Dwight Evans. There's one of the uh, rare action shots in 1975 Tops. Now, I don't exactly know what's going on in this in this picture, but um, seeing as it's the Rangers from the mid-70s, I would have to assume that it's uh, Len Randall failing at something. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's that. There's Johnny Bench, and it's a pretty nice bench, too. A little bit print dotting at the bottom here. You know, I, I, I'm a huge Rangers fan, and I always a huge Rangers fan, and I always talk crap about them. But it's 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 in the spirit of love. I want them to do well. It's it's good natured ribbing of the Rangers organizations. I just want them to do well. There's Hal McRae. He was a really good player for a long time for the Royals. <laughs> this card really amuses me because <laughs> they, they said, hey, uh, make kind of a pitching pose. And uh, this is the result that Vincente Romo came up with. Uh, complete and utter fail. Dude, um, you might want to at least try to have an athletic pose, you know, kind of pretend that you're kind of making a pitching motion. It kind of looks like he's trying to like catch a small child or something. <laughs> this is very amusing to me. Fail, Vincente Romo. Complete fail. And here's the, uh, <laughs> I love this. This is the, uh, the Chicago White Sox disembodied head team card. <laughs> Let me try to zoom in a little bit. Love this. This is awesome. <laughs> and we're not gonna bother with a natural background. Let's we'll just have all the car all the guys on the team as disembodied heads like on Futurama. Like the like the hall where they have all the uh you know the all the heads in the jars. <laughs> Let's just go with that. Fantastic. Love that. There's the Yaz right there. Not in too bad shape. It's pretty good shape. A little off center, but the corners and edges are pretty good on it. There's a uh, Rangers pitcher with a big wad of chaw in his mouth. There's a Ken Griffey. That's his first solo card. It's a second year card, but his first solo card. There's a Bill Clinton, a young Bill Clinton as a baseball player. So that's very interesting.
Sweet pair of aviators on Craig Kubik there. Very nice. And there's the Reggie. It's pretty clean. It's a pretty clean card. Print dot there, print dot there, but other than that, it's a very, very clean card. Looks great in the binder. Excellent, man. And now we're getting into the uh, the uh, league leader cards from this year. Had Rod Carew on the last page. There's Mike Schmidt, Johnny Bench. Let's see, Lou Brock right here. That's too small for me to tell. Catfish Hunter, Steve Carlton, Nolan Ryan. There's another Rangers pitcher with a big ch a wad of chaw in his mouth. Are you sensing a theme? And there's the Pete Rose right there. Pretty good shape. Not pretty crisp card overall. A little off center, but pretty crisp. Johnny Oates is a longtime Rangers manager. Uh, back during the mid to late 80s, early 90s, that era. Jim Palmer. There's a Bob Boone right there. Sweet mustache on Daryl Knowles right there. Rico Petroselli. Carmen Fanzone, another awesome mustache. Hey, there's Hall of Famer Tom Seaver right there. And here's the uh, angriest card of the set. I'm not sure what was going on with Daryl Thomas here, but... Daryl, cheer up, man. Why so angry, man? Cheer up, Daryl Thomas. And there's Bernie Carbo. He's a, he hit a, a pinch hit home run in that Game 6 of the World Series in 75. Salbando, Don Baylor, <laughs> and there he is, Doc Ellis. Oh yeah, if y'all don't know, Doc <laughs> if you guys don't know, Doc Ellis accomplished one of the greatest feats in baseball history. <laughs> Doc Ellis threw a, it was like 71 or 72, Doc Ellis threw a no-hitter while high on LSD. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a drug guy and I never have been. I don't know a lot about drugs, but <laughs> one thing I know, like he like he threw a no hitter, but he walked like nine guys, which doesn't surprise me because I don't know a lot about drugs, but one of the things that I would safely assume <laughs> is that um, a hallucinogenic drug like LSD does not exactly is not exactly conducive to pinpoint pitching control, <laughs> but. He did it. 
and <laughs> he should be saluted. At a way, Doc. And by the way, by the way, I highly recommend a documentary named No No the Documentary. It's freaking awesome. You should check it out. It goes through all like the uh, like the days before the game and everything. It's really, really good. Really well done. Here's uh, Steve Stone there. Ron Say, the Penguin. <laughs> there he is, Herb Washington. Now there is something very special about this card that you may be noticing. As far as I can focus. There we go. See that? Pinch runner. That's his stated position. And I will pop a um, I will pop a graphic up on the screen showing his career stats. Zero plate appearances. Zero innings of fielding. He's just straight up running. He was like a sprinter that, um, oh, Charles Finley, that's his name. Uh, Charles O. Finley, the owner of the A's, signed a sprinter to uh, join the team to pin do pinch running duties. <laughs> so, he never had a plate appearance. He never had a fielding opportunity. He uh, stole a bunch of bases for the A's, which is really, really interesting. There's Mike Cuellar. He's a really good pitcher for the Orioles back in the day. Pull back out just a tad. There we go. There's Larry Boa. Cito Gaston, manager for the Blue Jays back in their World Series days. Louis Tion, probably the best delivery of any pitcher ever. Now, uh, <clears throat> I know he has the hat on and everything, but I can tell that as far as white guy perm froes go, this guy has it going on. Gary Johnson. That thing, with my refined eye, that thing is spectacular. That is almost on the Jack Sigma Larry Bird level of white guy perm froze. WGPFs. Awesome. So props to Gary Johnson. <laughs> Clearly in my downtime, I spend way too much time thinking, like ranking the uh, quality of perms from white athletes in the 70s and 80s. I'm a very weird individual. <laughs> Here's Willie McCovey, Hall of Famer. There's Mario Mendoza, the uh, inspiration of the Mendoza line. A absolutely, an absolutely terrible hitter, but an excellent glove. Here are all the um, World Series highlight cards. Here's the Reggie right here.
Daryl Evans. Sparky Lyle. <laughs> All right. It's time to let your inner 12 year old come out. That's right. It's Pete Lecoq. Nothing more needs to be said. <laughs> uh, it just amuses me every time I see it. I am a 12 year old at heart. <laughs> but here's uh, Doug Stenhouse rocking the full on Old West Soup Strainer Mustache, which is pretty awesome. Well done, Doug Stanhouse. We had a very interesting looking pitching staff back in the mid-70s, I have to admit. There's Al Downing. He was the guy who allowed the... Uh, uh, Hank Aaron's 715th homer to break. Babe Ruth's record. And here's Nolan Ryan. And here is the card. It is a 7.5. Not too bad. I mean, there's I mean that printing smudge right here. Um, well, kind of iffy corners, but I mean, four foot rule. That's that's my that's my judge. If it passes the four foot rule, I'm cool with it. I got it for a good price. So excellent. It's a great Nolan Ryan card too. There's Vita Blue. <laughs> there he is. Good old Mr. Pole, Dick Pole. <laughs> yep. Uh there's a lot of this going around in 1975. You have Pete Lecoq and Dick Pohl. It's a 12-year-old's... A 12-year-old would be absolutely over the moon with this set. I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> and by the way, I know y'all are wondering. I've triple-checked and double-checked. Rusty Kuntz is not in the set. I've checked, I've double checked. He did not come into the league until the 80s. I know y'all are wondering. There's Gaylord Perry, Hall of Famer. We're getting towards the end, guys. Hey, there's Lou Brock. I'm not sure if this was his last year card, but this is towards the end of his career right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there's Billy Williams as an A, and this card's in really good shape. Hall of Famer. <laughs> Another nominee for the all-name team. Jack Brewhammer. Yeah.
There's Goose Gossage right there. Al Oliver, good player. Tony Perez. There's Joe Torrey. The Toy Cannon, Jimmy Wynn. There's a, another example of the giant eyeglasses that were very prominent back in these uh, 1970s sets. And there's Frank Robinson. One of the uh, two most over underrated players in baseball history, along with uh, Ricky Henderson. Frank Robinson and Ricky Henderson are the two most underrated players in baseball history. I mean, if people are putting a top ten list together, no one ever brings up Frank Robinson as a possibility to be in the top ten. He should be at least be in the conversation. He was so consistent, and he did it in both leagues at a time when the AL and NL were completely separate except for the World Series. Incredible. There's Tim McCarver. Uh, Rod Carew, Hall of Famer. <laughs> you know, like, I heard about an interview he did with someone that asked him, like, how, what he would hit against all of these shifts that are going on right now. And he said, oh, about 410, 420. I was like, yeah, you're probably about right, Rod. <laughs> I don't know why hitters are not taking advantage of that more. Uh, now we're getting into the uh, multiplayer rookie cards. Okay, so I don't know if y'all saw my last video. I do have a huge pet peeve against these cards. Uh, for one, I'm going to have to zoom in for us to even see who the player is. That's a red flag. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay. Let's see. Ah, there's the first one. Jim Rice right there. Doug DeSins. I think that's how it's pronounced. Pretty prominent player for a while. Let's see. Next one, oh yeah, Gary Carter. Okay guys, it's time to take a poll. What would you rather have? What is the more appealing card? This Gary Carter right here, this rookie card, or bam, a 1976 first solo card with the rookie cup on it as a nine. Come on. Come on. You know you want this card better, right? Well, I agree. <laughs> the cool thing about the first solo cards, like the second year cards, is you can get them in a pretty high grade for a very, very reasonable price, which I did with the Scary Carter. And they look infinitely better.
they're so much more appealing than these multiplayer cards. You can barely see the player you want on the cards. So that's that's my rant. I'm done with that. <laughs> We're moving on. And by the way, you have to give me props for bringing out visual aids to aid the video. That's the kind of quality you get here on the Rocky Avelli channel, I'm telling you, man. All right. <laughs> there is Fred Lynn right there and Keith Hernandez on that card along with three other schmucks that no one cares about. No offense to these guys, but still. If you want a Keith Hernandez rookie card, you want a Keith Hernandez card. Uh, okay, now I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Boog pal. I don't know what... I don't know what he's looking at there. That's I've always been intrigued by that. And there's Harmon Killebrew. He had way over 500 home runs in his career. Also very, very underrated. Not as much as Frank Robinson, but very underrated. Big time power hitter. He just played for a small market team, so he didn't get the shine he deserved. And there's Heidemann <laughs> rocking the long hair, mutton chops, and the Fu Manchu. Dude, going all out, I respect that. That is, Heidemann, you're a boss, dude. Rock that. Rock that look. I hope he's still rocking that look to this day. I really hope so. I I want that to be cho be true. I choose that to be true. It must be. We have reached the last three cards of the set. And here's the last card is the Hank Aaron. And I will pull this card out and show you the stats. Because I think that I'm pretty positive this is the last year card for Hank Aaron. Which is the cool thing about the last year cards is you can see the entire, the full gamut of stats. Pretty much. Look at this consistency. It was high 30s, low 40s, almost every single year. Unbelievable. Always over 300. Always. 310 career. Guy was just a beast. Love that card. I don't think it's in gradable condition, but I think three cards from, from a set like this is plenty for a PSA thing. Well, guys, that is the end of the set. I just want to... I'm uploading this on Father's Day, so I just want to give a big shout-out to all the dads out there. Um, as far as cards are concerned... Um, my, I remember clearly my dad buying me, he, he went to the gas station to get something and he, on top of what he was getting, he, was, he tossed me a pack of 1987 Topps Baseball with the wood grain borders. And I remember, I remember opening the pack and looking at the cards and just being fascinated. And I got a Rangers player in that pack. I think it was it was either Odeby McDowell or Mike Witt. I can't remember. But I instantly became ad addicted. I became obsessed with cards and it's continued on 
varying degrees throughout my adult years. Um, so that, that that's a, kind of a warm memory of my dad, I remember. And I lost him about 12 years ago, and I miss him very much. There was a long time where we did not get along very well, but over the, like in the last two or three years of his, of his life, we became <clears throat> best friends. And I miss him very much. And I just want to w wish all you dads a happy Father's Day. And, you know, you know, if, you, uh, you know, if your dad's still around, give him a call. Anyway, I, I need to end the video now. <laughs> so, guys, you, you take care. I will see you later. Bye-bye.